Uh, talk, talk towards the me. camera, yeah. Like into camera? Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Um, okay, so Craig, first off, how did you become involved with uh, with the Limitless Project? Uh, I, I'm looking right in the camera now. I became involved in the Limitless Project, which feels really natural. I became involved in uh, the Limitless Project when I, I went out to uh, to lunch with an executive from CBS almost exactly a year ago, it's August 21st today. Um, and she mentioned that the rights to it as a TV project may be coming available. Um, and I, I wasn't even necessarily thinking about like writing a TV pilot that year. Um, but it, see, it, it was one of those things where as soon as she said it, uh, I knew that I wanted to crack at it because uh, I love the visual style of the movie and the sort of um, uh, panache and irreverence of the movie. And I, I, there was a lot that appealed to me about it. Uh, and I thought it would be, I just thought it would be cool. It would be fun to bring it into a, into a TV show. So I said, she said that. And it was, I think, the first time in my career where like without even thinking about it, I was like... Uh, Yes, uh, don't don't talk to anybody else about that. Like I want to do it, um, and so I sort of jumped on it right there at that lunch. Um, so one of the great things about it is how many people from the the movie are involved, uh, including yeah. Bradley Cooper. Um, mm -hmm. Do you know how early he was involved in it? Uh, yeah, I, I do. Uh, Bradley was involved in in this incarnation of the Limitless TV show because mm -hmm. there was a version of it developed that I was involved in, um, and I don't know what Bradley's situation with that one was, but. Um, he was involved with this one from the very beginning. Um, you know, I, I, after that lunch, I spent some time thinking about what I might, what I might want to do with it as a TV series. And you know, the first thing you're asked is like, okay, are you, are you retelling the story of the movie? And or, it, but it seemed because the pills are anybody can take them. It, did, I liked that you weren't sort of chained to that. Um, so when I came up with the basic structure of the show. Um, I got on the phone with Bradley and, and he was, we talked to him a lot because he has a very good relationship with uh, Alex Kurtzman and Alex's company from, from their days together on Alias. Um, so I pitched my take on the show and he gave some uh, very helpful thoughts and notes. Um, uh, at, you know, I mean, he, he really was contributing a lot to at the DNA level of the show from the very get go. And, you know, we were always sort of talking about what, what scene is Bradley Cooper going to be in? What scene is Bradley Cooper going to be in? Um, and I never, believed that he was really going to do it you know I mean so I always in my mind had this sort of like uh, I had a backup plan uh, because the I, 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 he's the I kind of like the biggest movie star in the world at the moment um, so I, I until he actually like showed up on set I, I, I sort of didn't believe it was actually going to happen but uh, there he is he's in there it's great what was your backup plan um well you know it would have been Again, which would have been, obviously wouldn't have been nearly as cool. Um, it, it, it was to have somebody, I mean, we were always, we knew Eddie Moore was going to be a figure in the world. Um, uh, and it was to have, basically, instead of Eddie Moore himself, an emissary, mm -hmm. you know, communicates with Brian. Yeah. Okay. Um, so one of the one of the things with a lot of shows like this uh, tends to be that the the cops don't come off very smart. I think one of the things that uh, you showed us a little bit of the second episode and the cops, they clearly know what they're doing. Um, in future episodes, is it, is it harder to do that as he's working more and more with them? Um, well, it is. A, it's definitely a challenge. Um, I think that you know there are a lot of um, you know smartest man or woman in the room shows on TV, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the 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 quickest way to make me turn the channel is to make that person appear smart by having the people around them be dumb when right. they wouldn't be dumb. Um, and so it, it definitely is a challenge, but. Um, um, it's one that I'm used to because I, you know, I, I wrote on a Sherlock Holmes show for for mm -hmm. a, a little over three years before I came here, and um, so we applied that lens to every scene there. You know, I mean, we we always came from the premise uh, that you know the, these cops are great at their jobs. It's just Sherlock Holmes is Sherlock Holmes, so um, it's a it's 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 a challenge, but it's a way that I'm used to thinking just because I've been doing it for a while. Um. Is it a challenge to sort of weave the, the overarching stories, like obviously um, uh, Jennifer, Jennifer, ha, Jennifer Carpenter's character, um, you know, with her father, there's that story, and just Eddie Mora in general, like what, what, is, what part does he play in it? Yeah. How, um, how much does that weave into the general episodes? Uh, well, what you find is that when you, what your plan was when you set off is not always necessarily how it winds up playing out, and I think that... Uh, as we, you know, we've done a few of these episodes now um, in various stages of completion, uh, and we're finding that that the serialized elements and what you would call the mythology elements and and the story of Eddie Mora uh, is taking up more considerably more camera time than than I would have thought. Um, 
because it's 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 just interesting stuff. Um, uh, the idea of Brian having to hide this booster shot, if if you will, that he's received from the FBI, and and the nervousness over whether they're going to realize that he's not truly immune. Um, exactly what Eddie Mora might call on him to do while he's within the FBI. I mean, it's all it's all very interesting stuff that we are. It's really taking up a lot of quite a bit of our screen time, actually. So you know, it is. Um, I would have imagined it to be. Uh, a more standalone type of series uh, when we set out, and it has turned out to be much more serialized. Um, so we got to talk to Jake a little while we were at Comic Con this year. Um, he seems very much, you know, uh, in the nature, in the spirit of Brian. He's yes. got very much that personality. But uh, how how did you find him? Was it just a general casting, or um, you know, what what made you guys choose him? Uh, we found. I mean, we found Jake um, initially at Bradley Cooper's suggestion um, because Jake. McDormand, our star, was in American Sniper with Bradley, mm -hmm. um, and I didn't know his work, and I just only looked him up online, and he—he's, I mean, he's a handsome guy, and I was like, he was—is he—is he the underdog that Brian needs to be? You know, I mean, I, I had just looking at his photograph and nothing else, I had a couple of questions, but we we met him, we met him for coffee, and I knew within five, like I was like, he—he he is really. We've adjusted the character somewhat to be closer to who Jake naturally is, but Jake is also naturally very close to the character that we wrote, and he's also a great technical actor. And, and, and but um, but you know he he is a very enthusiastic uh, and and just open hearted guy, like just like just like Brian is, and he's a lot of fun, like Brian. So I mean, it was a uh, from from that meeting we had him. He came in and read the scenes for us about three or four days later, and. Uh, as I was sending texts while he was reading to the other producers, you know, because it was just me and Mark in there, um, that, that he was the guy that I wanted. So um, awesome. it took a while, but um, from those texts till when he caught the role, it's a very complicated thing casting a pilot. But um, but I, I knew I wanted him from the second he started reading. Um, so obviously, it can be fun to get uh, really cool guest stars. Do you guys have any guest stars other than Bradley Cooper that are planned for future episodes or that you know of? Yes, yeah, well, we have, um, you know, Jake's real-life girlfriend um, is playing his ex-girlfriend on the show, uh, Annalie Tipton, and she's already filmed her part. Uh, uh, so she is, uh, she, you know, w we wanted to do in an early episode, it, it seems like one of the one of the most obvious, but one of the, but still nonetheless very much worth telling stories, is what happens when you run into your ex while you're on NZT, you know, I mean, there's no really, there's no better way to do it than, than, than when you're on the drug. Um, so uh, we reached out to Jake and said, like, would, would Anna Lee be up for this? Because she's actually is perfect for the part as written, too. Um, so she's already come in and shot, and that's been great. Um, who else? Would... We have a very cool actor named Colin Salmon playing. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, he's playing uh, a guy who's connected to Eddie Mora um, named uh, Sands. And he's terrific, um, and he's playing out his arc right now. Uh, we're casting the role of Rebecca's romantic interest right now, but that's that's in process, so we don't have anything to announce on that. Um, uh, yeah, but you know, obviously, we're we're we have our eyes out for uh, for uh, any and every interesting actor. Very cool. Um, so it, obviously, um, using trying to find ways to, to make the NZT sort of like show itself and, and the things he has to remember can be difficult. What are some of your favorite ways that you've been able to to show that taking effect? Um, well, I think that my, for me, like the, the I guess I, like the thesis statement of the show are the two action sequences that we looked at today, you know, like where one of them is viewed through the through a non-NZT perspective, and one is seen from from within NZT, um, and I think, in a way that's not hitting the audience over the head with it, it does convey effectively. I think, like well, the difference between life on and off the drug. So that that's my, I guess that's my favorite one, just because uh, it's the first one. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, let me see. I mean, we've done. Uh, oh, you know, we are always looking for just offbeat ways to dramatize thinking so you know we've we've um, we've shown a bladder filling up with cranberry juice uh, uh, to demonstrate that somebody was about to have to go to the bathroom uh, we've done a, an amazing martial arts montage uh, I love the family circus sequences in the in the first episode back from the pilot where we're sort of like uh, compressing time by uh, by showing Jake traveling around New York and doing all these different little things um, uh, I, I I love them all, I think. I mean, it's what's fun about writing and, and making the show. 
Um, okay, I have to ask about the baby in the womb part, which is both awesome and, and slightly disturbing. Yeah. Um, so how how did that sort of come to be? Yes, the baby in the womb. <laughs> uh, my daughter has a lot of. She still asks me questions about that. She's seven and. She, she, she thinks that it's in like Bradley Cooper has a baby inside it. Um, it came to be um, so I initially I pitched my ideas to Bradley on the phone and then as we got further into like what would his character do uh, I flew out to New York City where he was acting um, in the Elephant Man the play and met with him uh, and we just talked about that scene um, we knew enough like we knew we, we, like at that point we knew that Eddie would have this other substance that he would provide and withhold from Brian um, and so we knew, like we basically knew sort of what that scene was going to be in the architecture of the show but we just sort of like really wanted to talk about the bones of it um, and so he I think yeah Bradley said the line um, ha have you can you remember what it was like to be inside your mother's womb um, and then I, I liked I mean I thought it was a cool line so it's like yeah and then and then you, know, you could say yeah, I do I, I, I go there when I need to relax um, and uh, probably said, I love that, I love that. Um, so it was, that was always, like, we had that line. And then, um, at, I don't know, at some point I was just, like, writing it. I just thought, why not? You know, why not have the, why not have the baby talk in Bradley Cooper's voice, you know? I mean, it just seemed like, it just, it just why not, really? <laughs> um, I think I was just there writing on the page, and, and, uh, and it, it seemed... Uh, it seemed funny. It seemed in keeping with the spirit of the show, um, and we had the resources of a pilot to play with, so a little more time. I, I just like you know, uh, and then I put it in there, and everybody kind of. I thought it would be one of those things where like get that talking baby out of there, but uh, here we are. It's going out to America. You know, we once uh, heard Ray Bradbury speak, and he talked about how he could remember being in the womb. Really? Really? Yes. Oh wow, cool. Yeah. I have drawings by Ray Bradbury hanging over my writing desk at home. Oh, that's I'm a big so fan. Neat. Yeah. That's um, cool. So Mark Webb directed the pilot. Mm -hmm. uh, that that's pretty epic. How yeah. how did you guys how did that come to come to fruition? Uh, well, initially Neil Berger, who directed the movie, yeah. was going to direct the pilot, and you know I flew out to New York and had that same time that same trip where I was meeting with Bradley. I met with Neil and talked about how he made the movie and stuff. Uh, and when we got the script picked up, Neil was still in production on his Showtime pilot, Billions. Um, so he had to drop out. Uh, and um, Kurtzman Orsi, the production company that I'm working with, uh, said, you know, well, we have a relationship with Mark Webb. What would you think about him? Uh, and I thought, I mean, as soon as they brought up his name, I thought it was a great idea, um, specifically because of the f sort of fantasy sequences in 500 Days of Summer. I could see how those those moments are really like NZT moments in a way and I, and, I, and I love the moments in that movie I love the dance sequence with Joseph Gordon-Levitt I mean I think it's really I think they're brilliant um, so I said yes and I didn't think it was ever realistic like I didn't think it was something that was actually ever going to happen I went back to making lists of other directors um, and uh, but that was like a Friday and then he was signed up to do it by Monday so it was really you know it was, it was great it's so neat. it seems like you've, you've got a lot of moments like that um, yeah we had a good time making this pilot for sure yeah Oh, uh, well, I, I guess that's all the time that we have. Um, but, Craig, thank you so Yay, much for talking with us. You're welcome.